Paranormal Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. Any opinions or comments made by any guest are their own and they do not necessarily reflect any of the presenters or network's opinions. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. It's really good to see you. I don't know what happened to the driver and my luggage and... Well, and with all this, I I thought I was in the wrong place. I bid you welcome. This is Malcolm Robinson and you're listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Network, the UK's biggest paranormal network, and this is Paranormal Dimensions with David Young. Hello and welcome to this week's show. Thank you for that introduction, Malcolm. On this show, we'll be taking a slight detour into the world of fiction, but with a touch of paranormal truth mixed into it. My guest is going to be Shane Struthers, who's written quite a number of books. I'll just tell you a bit more about that in a moment. Um, but if you would like to get in touch with me at any time, uh, my email address is davidyoung2qn at yahoo.co.uk. That's davidyoung2qn at yahoo.co.uk. Now, on to today's guest. Her name is Shane Struthers. She was born and bred in Brighton, UK. Uh, Shane is the author of 22 supernatural thrillers so far, some set in various locations in England, others in far more far-flung destinations such as Venice and America. Having been brought up with an understanding of the occult and alternative views on religion, she threads this knowledge throughout her books, often drawing on real-life experiences of her own from people she's known and from well-known occult figures. Her books tend to revolve more around psychological horror than pure horror, which in her opinion is far more terrifying. You won't find gore, vampires, werewolves, zombies or such like in her fiction. Her psychic survey series have proved very popular, becoming global Amazon genre bestsellers. Her new series, This Haunted World, is a set of standalone books set in and around the world's most haunted places and again we fact with fiction. They too have topped the Amazon genre charts. So, I take great pleasure in introducing Shaney Struthers. Hello, Shaney. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Now, I, I was just saying to you off here that uh, I'm, I was actually drawn to your books um, because of the cover. I know you shouldn't tell a book by its cover, but I was actually drawn to your <laughs> books. And uh, they, 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 yeah. the covers fascinate me. The titles fascinate me. Um, yeah. How did you come about um, starting to write psychological horror books? Because I did do a little bit of research. I think your first book, it appears to me, was called The Runaway Year in 2013. <laughs> is that true? Indeed, it was. Right, okay. It, yes, that, 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 is a, that is a terrible truth, David. It is a <laughs> terrible truth. No, um, I did, <laughs> when I first started off, um, I've been a writer all my life. Basically, I left. I studied English at university, and then I left university, and I, um, I, I got into the travel industry, and I wrote for the travel industry for 20 years um, for all the, the big names, Virgin, etc. So, um, and then I wanted to write a novel, and I thought, well, what should I write? And, I, and I've always loved horror. Don't get me wrong, horror is my first love. Paranormal. I think we all do, don't we, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's my first love, always has been. I was brought up with a mother who um, made a lifetime study of the spiritual world and passed on a lot of her knowledge to me. Um, so I've been used to the paranormal. She would not say horror, I don't really like the word horror, paranormal. You know, I've been, you, yeah. I, I'm, I've been used to it all my life. But I wanted to write a book, and I thought, what should I write, what should I write? And I had this idea, and it was an idea for a romance set in Cornwall. Uh, North Cornwall, Tintagel, in fact, one of my favourite places ever. 
And um, so, yeah, I sat down and I wrote that and um, got it sent off. Um, it got lots of offers for publication, got it published, wrote the sequel, which is The Runaway X. And in fact, it was a trilogy and the trilogy to that, um, which I, there's a bit of a funny story about the third one. I pulled it from them in the end because I wasn't very happy with the publisher. Oh, right. um, and I, I've, I've republished it under a different name. But, um, yeah, I loved it. Really loved writing. But I was done with romance after, <laughs> you know, I just don't have the imagination for it. <laughs> right. And I think that also you faced with, the, there's so much of it out there as well, doesn't there? With, with, um, Oh, yeah, I mean, it's really popular. It's the yeah, most well, popular is, yeah. genre. And if you can crack it, you can crack it. But, you know, once you've written one love story, for me, personally, you've written them all. And also, I don't actually read romance. Right. <laughs> so I read... I was going to say, I wondered if it was based on personal experiences or something, you know. So. No, no, it was just a little idea, and I just sort of wrote it down and went with it. And, and it actually did very well at the time, as did the, as did the Runaway X. Um but it's not what I wanted to do. No. So I jumped ship and um, I wrote the first book in the Psychic Survey series, which is The Haunting of High Down Hall. And it escalated from there. And I've since written 22. Um, yeah, I was going to say to you, I, think, I, I was going to say, I wasn't sure if it was 21 or 22. I, I it's think 22, I, yeah. yeah. Well, this, I mean, you're only a young girl as well. I'm not younger. <laughs> Well, you're not old, are you? You've still got a lot in you. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a few more good years left, I reckon. <laughs> so, you, I mean, you've got another book coming out shortly as well, I believe, for Christmas. I've got The Damn Season coming out on the 1st of November. That's um, So I write, I tend to write Christmas ghost stories if I can, mm. if I can fit them into my yearly schedule. Uh, and they're shorter novels, uh, sort of around 50, 55,000 words. I've written Eve, Blake Mort... Carfax House was last year's Christmas ghost story, and this year's Christmas ghost story is the damn season. And I, I say ghost story, I, 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 I tend to explore, explore all aspects of the paranormal, and I tend to ask within the books just what does constitute a haunting. Mm. And mm. it's not the obvious, usually. It, it can be psychological, for example. Yeah, sure. I mean, also, yeah. you can get, um, like, in, in the poltergeist world, for instance, um, yeah. it can be caused by children, can't it, with um, mm -hmm. like psychological problems, I can see. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, poltergeist, exactly, yes, um, especially teenage girls, apparently, mm. uh, able to manifest um, sort of deep-seated feelings and emotions in a, in a physical way, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, that film in uh, the book. Obviously, it was Stephen King, Carrie, which was quite oh, a yeah, heavy, yeah. heavy story, wasn't it? It's, uh, I, think they really brilliant. Did, I think they really did that recently, didn't they? Or they did. But it wasn't as good as the old it one wasn't. with Sissy Spacek. No, oh, yeah. and that was one of the first horrors I, I read. And um, I was, so, I was, remember, I was only about thirteen. I was so engrossed in it, and a strange mm. thing happened because I'm quite good at manifesting as well. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. I'll I ask was you reading. About that in a minute. <laughs> well, I was reading the, um, you know, the the scene where the the pig's blood falls oh, on yeah, her head. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. And I was so engrossed. And, <gasps> and you feel so, and it. you feel so sorry for her as well, don't you? Oh, you, know. you oh, it's you do heartbreaking. Um, and I looked up and there was blood all over my hand. And I thought, oh, I've cut myself. So I put the book down, went and got a uh, tissue, and there was no cut anywhere. But as I say, I can manifest things sometimes. That's so, oh. yeah, I think I was just so into now, you're it. Sure it wasn't strawberry jam or something? The jam sandwich? No, it you? wasn't. I wasn't eating any toast or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to excuse my sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. are, so the the, um, the the psychic surveys book are, are they actually the same characters, uh, or, or or are they absolutely different stories in their own right? What what the psychic surveys? Yeah, series? yeah, the series. In that, because I've written several series, but in the psychic yeah. survey series, they're all the same characters. Ah. Yeah, you've got um, you've got a, a a quartet of kick out kick ass female psychics. You've got Ruby Davis at the helm. You've got Theo, Ness and Corinna. Plus you've got the ghost dog Jed who is um uh sort of Ruby's companion, um, shall we say, and it's probably one of the most uh, popular characters 
everyone loves Jed. Everyone wants a Jed <laughs> by their side. A ghost dog. Why wouldn't you? We've probably Brilliant. all got ghost dogs by our side, all the thought. We, we, I think we've, well, all, we've all lost dogs at uh, some time. And I do hear that people do sense their dogs around them as well. They're, they're old dead, dead dogs, you know. Yeah, 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 perhaps, maybe. I think there's, yeah, quite a lot around us really, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> if you open your eyes and look. <laughs> so in, in the paranormal world, what is your favourite sort of genre? Is it ghosts and um, hauntings? Yeah, yeah, ghosts and haunting. I'm not into gore. I really am not. I'm not into um, vampires, werewolves. Um, don't mind a bit of wit- you know the uh, witches. I do like a witch. Hmm. Um, I, really, I like sort of ho- ho- horror, paranormal, whatever you want to call it, on a on a more psychological level. That's yeah. that, that's what fascinates me. Yeah, I know what you mean about the horror aspects of it. Um, yeah. It sort of takes you in another direction. It, it just goes into like um, the slasher movies and all that sort of thing, doesn't it? Exactly, you know? and they're highly predictable. They're, yeah. You know, but they are good fun. I mean, you know, having said that, I have watched my fair amount of slasher movies <laughs> in, in my time. You know, I have done all that. So, but I think um, it comes a point when you perhaps go on to another level with it, yeah, maybe if yeah. you've got a real fascination with it. Yeah, probably in the like the Stephen King type of book because they're they're actually yeah. like a so- psychological horror most of those, aren't they? With a supernatural yes. twist yeah. on most of them. Um, yeah, and also them. we yeah. go back to the Alfred Hitchcock series, um, <laughs> the, old, oh. the old boobies. They were very yes. psychologically uh, horror and yes. not not really supernatural. In, no, in, no, know. but they're still scary, weren't they? Yeah. They still creep you out, and and that's what the fascinating thing is about it all. You know that the doesn't have to be horror as such it, it it can still have the same creep factor the same you know scare factor and in fact more if, if not more i mean i think that the, the, one of the books that i think one well, is one of my favorite books is the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson and that's a real less is more um type of book i don't know if you've read it it's only a small I, sort of i, I haven't short but novel. did they make a movie of that i'm sure I've they seen did, it. yeah it, it's honestly uh, oh the old black and white movie was great actually uh, the one with claire bloom um yeah. anything else after that really don't bother with mm. but um it, it's a real it was all about well is it haunted is that uh, uh, is that someone outside my door is that someone in that other room that you know it was all left to your imagination. Yeah. So your imagination, of course, was being fed, and it just ran wild. Mm, yeah. Um, fascinating. It's a good, good book, and it's only a short book. It's only a short novel. I think. Or I think most of the best stories, ghost stories, are quite sort of yeah, short. Yeah, the compact you know. ones. I remember the old, I, the compact collections used to get a lot of ghost stories, yeah. and they were like little short stories, and maybe yeah. maybe five it or, five or seven that. pages or something. Yeah. 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 The genre definitely lends itself to that, I think. Yeah, because you've got to fit quite a lot. You know, I think with a, a, a large book or a full size yeah. book, you've got to sort of develop the characters and everything, haven't you? More. Yeah. But in the ghost story, you're just getting that little incident in a certain time time frame, sort of. Yeah, thing. It was, Susan Hill does that very well, well as well. You know, the woman in black mm, and yes. uh, the small hand and all those. She does that very well. The small, short, sharp ghost story. Yeah. So they're real inspirations for me. Although most of my books do tend to be, you know, full-length novels, but I do like to crank out the um, the shorter Christmas ghost story. Yeah. Are you yeah. constantly working on them all the time? Or? Constantly, yeah. 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 It, it's my... it looks like you get sort of about maybe two a year out from what I can see here. Um, I, I suppose I get two full-length novels and a shorter novel, which is be the Christmas ghost story. Mm. So, yeah, two and a half. <laughs> Two and a half. So, how do you keep developing your? Yeah, how do you develop those stories, or is it just something? Is it something that comes to you, or? Yeah. Well, I think once you open the old floodgates, I think the ideas do come through all mm. the time. I mean, I've got them backed up in my head, and I think, oh, I want to get onto this, and I want to get into that, but I must finish this one first. Um, so yeah, I mean, like like I say, I've got the damn season coming out on the first of November, which is the Christmas ghost story, but. Um, 25,000 words into the next This Haunted World right, book. Yeah. So, you know, actually, so sometimes you're working on two at once. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I do. And sometimes I have a break as well, strangely enough. Sometimes yeah, I think, well, oh, I'm going to give myself, you know, a couple of weeks off, three or four, two, three weeks off. And I hate it. I can't bear it. <laughs> I think I'm a workaholic. Yeah, maybe. I have to force myself not to work. 
really? literally forced myself not to do it. I guess it's nice because you can do it from home anyway, can't you? You're not sort of um, yeah. having to go to the office every day or something. So no, uh... no. I mean, I, I work full time and I work at home and it's great and all. And I, and I, and I do live in the real world as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do have quite a busy, you know, life outside of writing. But I still manage, you know, I'm 22 books, 22 paranormal books in. But you throw in the other three, that's 22, 25 books. So, hmm. you know, I'm quite... I'm, I'm an old hand. I'm quite fast. Yes. You know. I was going to say, um, I think I mentioned it before, that uh, your books sort of draw you, the, the covers draw you. And I was actually yeah. drawn to the covers. And yeah. um, the designs and the titles sort of really sort of grab you. And uh, yeah. uh, who it does your covers? That's a lady called Gina Dickerson, and she's from Rose Wolf Design. And she does all my covers, and she's absolutely brilliant. I just basically tell her what I want, and she's so in tune with me and probably all her other clients too. She just gives you a whole load of variations on what you've asked for, and there it is, the perfect cover, invariably. Yeah, they are. They're fabulous. I mean, I will put yeah. the uh, pictures of all the books on my uh, Paranormal Dimensions page anyway, so anyone yeah, wants well, to see them, because they are really... Yeah. I mean, you can always see them on Amazon anyway, if you go searching. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I, you also do um, ghost hunts, I understand. Well, I've done I've done a few, yeah, in in my time. All good, all good for um, you know feeding the yeah. imagination, for fueling uh, ideas. So yeah, I've done a few in my time. Yes, yeah, so, um, Blakemore was uh, inspired um, by a trip to uh, how do you say Wymering Manor, Wymering Manor in Portsmouth. Hmm, I did sure. a ghost hunt there. And uh, that well, that's reputably, re- reputedly, UK's most haunted house. And it was a really good overnight vigil that I spent there. Um, and it did inspire Blakemore, which is this incredibly e- haunted house, which is at the heart actually of the Psychic Surveys books. Right. Yeah. Um, it does come up again and again. What happened in that? Um, that house and the spirits that occupy it are spirits that remain taunting the group of psychics that were, although they're working on other cases, stuff usually comes back to Blakemore, you mm. know, and what happened there. And it's still very much a mystery, Blakemore, what did happen there, because it's nothing's ever, nothing's been written about it or anything like that, you know, there's no documentation or anything. So this is very much a mystery, this house, as to what happened there, why, and the effect that it continues to have on people. Can you give much more away about it without giving too much away about your book? <laughs> um, what, about Blakemore? Yeah. Oh, it's evil, it's evil. It's it now, w- Wimmering Manor is not the um, UK's most haunted house, Blakemore. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, it, you can find out all about it because I have written a separate book away from the Psychic Surveys series um called Blakemore and um, you read that and it will tell you all about uh it, you know basically I took aspects of all the most haunted houses in the UK um including like Borley Rectory and stuff like that and I shoved it all into one house uh, shall we right, say. Yeah. so there's aspects of many real life haunted locations um shoved into this one house so it's it's uh, it's bad it's 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 bad and i funny i've had a manifestation when i was um writing that because i was so deeply ingrained in writing this chapter and it was about flies a fly invasion in the house because flies are often a sign of mm-hmm. a um a haunting and um and i looked up and my god around my laptop were a whole host of flies and I thought, oh, where, they, where have they come from? I've just been writing about where have they come from? And, um, we, and I don't normally get fly invasions in my house, let oh. me tell you that. And um, so, yeah, uh, got up, dealt with it. Uh, but an hour later, they were all gone. It was so strange. Anyway, when you're writing about stuff like Blake, but when you're drawing from real life hauntings and, you know, places that are considered evil, shall we say, um, infused with evil it is important to protect yourself because you're 
you're opening your mind up to stuff and it, it can attract. Mm. So I, I have now have, I have loads of protective crystals all over my um, desk. Um, I always write with good intent. I always infuse my writing with plenty of light. So I balance it out, you know, and um, so far so good. Yeah, do you feel that crystals and things do actually help you then? Uh, they help me. Yeah. They might not help anybody else, but they certainly help. I love crystals. My house is weighed down with crystals. Yeah, we've got some here. You know, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. It's like they the, help the, me. the little ob- obelisk one. Is it the... Um, I'm not quite sure. I don't know too much about crystals, so I, have, I have to admit. Yeah. But so we yeah. have got the, like, the pointed one. It's like a little ob- obelisk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know I've seen uh, crystals in those shapes um, before, but, yeah, I have them everywhere, and I have some things in place that... Um, because you do, you open yourself up to a lot. You know, I mm. do, as you say, you know, I write about real life. I write about Crowley, Alistair Crowley, and he often pops up in the books and et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I, I have to, you, 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 you do have to be careful, especially uh, you're sensitising yourself to it in a way. Mm. Was, yeah. was Crowley evil or was he just uh, misunderstood? Well, well I, th- I think he was... Um, I think I think he did some bad things from from my research, um, some stupid things. He was misunderstood. He was also quite theatrical. He um, he was he he courted um, attention. He wanted attention. So yeah, uh, he did some bad. Sh- you know, oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say I'll that. I'll cut that out. I'll cut that out. You'll get a bleep. Okay, bleep, bleep. Um, sorry, he, right. he did some bad stuff um, for sure and um, ended his days um, a broken, drug addicted old man in Hastings. Yeah, so. no, he did get around a bit though, didn't he? Um, I he actually, got around. I actually yeah. um, lived in Suffolk uh, for about eight years and I used to go to Rendlesham Forest quite a bit and the, he actually yeah. apparently made it to there quite a few times. You heard the name Alison yeah. Crowley around. So, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he did get around, didn't he? I mean, you know, and he was, he was right, he was bang into it and he did write some stuff that was very, very interesting but. Yeah, he can be taken the wrong way as well. Mm. On your ghost hunts, have you experienced many um, experiences? <laughs> experienced many experiences? <laughs> <laughs> um, have I? Um, on the ghost hunts, um, only really down at my local one, actually, Preston Manor. Right. And um, which has got loads of ghosts galore there, and it feels it. In some of the places in Preston Manor where you where you can go off limits on ghost hunts, mm. it it's oh it's quite scary um anyway we were doing a seance which of course i wouldn't recommend anyone to do not really um but we were doing a seance in the morning room and there's a spirit there called mad jack now he's called mad jack not because he's mad but because he was very mischievous in life um one of the a, a son of the family that owned it um anyway he 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 likes to pop up on these ghost hunts and have a play around with with everyone mainly the women and we were doing this um, seance, and there he was, it, you know, is that you? Yes, it's me. And I said, well, if it's really you, do something. Can you do something for me? And he said, yes. I said, can you touch my hair? And my God, somebody oh, ran really? there oh. and through my hair. So in a bit of a higher, squeakier voice, I said, is that you, Jack? <laughs> and he said, yes. And then, then that's it. The atmosphere changed. Whatever was in there, which had charged the atmosphere, it just went, completely calm again and really? uh so he'd gone he did what he had to do and he went uh-huh. so and that's that's no joke yes that really did happen you didn't do a uvet fielded and go running screaming out the room or <laughs> no no i no 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 I, I can't bear that on most haunted just when it gets a bit interesting they all go screaming in the other direction but that's what you're here for oh, no, that's what they're watching you for yeah they're all calling them out but is there anybody there as soon as something happens we'll run it's like for god's sake so no i didn't i was very brave no it didn't feel threatening not in the slightest he's not a threatening spirit mm. so he's just mischievous i must say i do like the most haunted shows not for <laughs> the content but actually for the locations you know i'm yes. interested in the like the history of the locations that they tell you about at the beginning of the show um yeah you know i, oh, I find yeah. that the most fascinating part of the shows you know. yeah definitely i i do as well and um and i used to love derek 
yeah, and his yeah, spirit yeah. guide. Did you ever meet him, by any chance? No, my husband did. Um, he went to Hastings to one of his shows, mm. but um, I, I couldn't go that evening, so uh, I didn't. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he used to make me smile, Derek. Yeah. Well, apparently he was a very good um, medium, if you if like, if you want to call it, or, or sensitive, yeah. or, or whatever. Um, yeah. I think he just got caught out in the trap of um, having to perform for the cameras. Yeah. Of course. You know, yeah. And come up with a, a result for a TV show. You know. But if you take it all with a pinch of salt, then um, it, you know that, that that show, it, then it's an enjoyable thing to watch. Yeah, I actually really enjoy watching it. I must say. I mean, yeah. what people have got to keep in mind is you're you're watching. 45 minutes or an hour of something that yeah. would have been over sort of six or seven hours yeah. or, you know yeah. all that filming and <clears throat> of course that's why it looks like everything happens at once uh, yeah when in actual fact it doesn't i mean you, you know yourself on those yeah, ghost no, hunts, no. it gets boring yeah. some nights isn't it you know yeah, it if, if, if you go on them and you think oh nothing's yeah. happening let's just go home pack up and go home and then all yeah. of a sudden something it will happen and um, sort of grabs your attention and you think oh that was good what happens let's yeah. see what else will happen <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no. That, so have I, um, there's a few other little things that have happened on Ghost Hunts. Um, I went with a Twilight team um, run by a friend of mine called Laura Goff. Um, oh, she's a friend of you. I've actually, because I've actually, I'm going to try and go on some of those hunts because I actually, I, was, I, found I, on your, I found that on your page actually. I was going to ask you about yeah. that. Because <laughs> well, they do have some interesting locations on there. She runs a great ghost um, hunt, actually, and um, I went with her on a. I've been with her, with her to the Brighton Sales and also to um, the Hastings Real uh, True Crime Museum. Oh right! Now yeah. that, if you can go to that one. Funny enough, I was there last there. weekend. <laughs> Were you? Do you remember oh. that we had a really stormy evening? Um, yeah. It was really chucking it down with rain, and uh, we went on a ghost hunt with the East Anglia Paranormal Investigation Team. Um, unfortunately, there. it wasn't a very good night. <laughs> oh. Well, our night was our night was banging. I'm telling, literally well, banging. You, well, when you're talking about banging, there's a there's a there's a um, there's a club next door with all the yeah. Um, no, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean as in it. No, no, but that's, a, that was like a lot of noise from next door, which was a bit off-putting. Oh, off -putting, I see, so you know. that ruined it, it for you. It was a, like a club, yeah, bought with the evening. Oh, we didn't have that. We didn't, didn't have that. We didn't have the noise or anything from next door. Yeah, no, it kind of spoiled really the whole atmosphere, really, really, you know. Yeah, what a shame. Yeah, we drove all the way there in the, in the fuel uh, shortage thing as well. <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. God. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah we, we sort of left by about ten, but apparently a few things happened after after we left. But um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't a very spectacular night, let's say. Quite an expensive yeah. night because we we'd, um, spent eighty quid putting our dogs in the kennels and everything as well. Oh <laughs> gosh, gosh. Oh no, there's there, there's but, various ones. So, so, so say the venue yeah. itself is really interesting. You know. Yeah, about, the venue uh, is fantastic. I mean, it's got some very. I think, you know, really macabre things in, hasn't mm, it? The bath, the, yeah, acid yeah. the acid bath murderer's bath. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, somebody <laughs> dropped their camera in the bath, actually, and couldn't reach it. <laughs> That's a sort of yeah. lean over the, lean over the yeah. fence to get it. <laughs> I would, yeah, they, uh, they said, do you want to sit in the bath? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> it's all the same to you, but that's where... That's where you and I part ways on that. <laughs> I'm not sitting in that bath. <laughs> yeah, they've got some interesting exhibits, I must say. They have, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know really what what sort of, I don't need, what sort of spirits have they got there? Do you know? Because I, I didn't really experience anything. There's a little girl. Uh, the little girl loved. I took my son, um, and the little girl loved my son. Absolutely loved him. Followed him around. Was on the Ouija board. Or was mm. communicating with him. So I just loved him. So there is a little girl. The other spirits, I don't know what, but there were quite a few that put in a bit of a performance that night. Um, but um, the little girl was really cute, really sweet. Right. Yeah. Because it used to be smugglers' caves and things. So some some yeah. people said they're like imagine kind of man-made caves type of thing, aren't they? That's it. Yeah. yeah. I should imagine there's a few old rogues in there though. Oh, I should imagine. But there's a lot of but you know you when you've got the acid murderers bath you know um, and you've got various other dreadful um, objects so, you know. I write another series um, called Reach for the Dead, which is mm. uh, the main um, character in it, Shady Grows, um, has the gift of psychometry, so she can hold an object and sense the energy that has infused that object, you know, from the past, and, and so the stories unfold. But um, 
for me, I mean, I think psychometry is a, yeah, is, 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 is a very interesting aspect of the paranormal and the energy that would be, a negative energy that would be attached to that, say, that bath, for example, mm. would be immense. Yeah. You know, to that, and to some of those um, weapons and exhibits that they have in that museum would be immense. And I think you, you do, you know, you really do have to be careful with this stuff. There is a dark side to it. Mm. And stuff can attach itself to you by proxy, yeah, you know. Yeah. So y- 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 you go, oh, I mean, they call them ghost hunts. I, d- I don't, I don't like the word hunt. I don't like to no. think you, you hunt for a ghost. But I mean, it, it, it's for want of best. Unfortunately, that's, that's the label. That's, that's the label it's got. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's what they're called. I think, and, you know, but you have to go into it with respect, and you have to go into it with protection as well. Mm. And um, protection is something I talk a lot about in the psychic surveys books because they go. Ha- the haunting of High Down Hall starts off quite light, but they go into some very, very dark situations um, as the books go on. And you know, you've got to you've got to protect yourself. The writer, me, I have to protect myself writing that stuff because, as I say, a lot of it is built, um, you know, based on true stuff. Hmm. So I know about the protection uh, you're talking about, and that's to bringing down the light over the body and sort of yeah. encompassing yourself in it and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, standard. Stuff, yeah. yeah, I have seen it done properly and also seen mm. it not not done properly, you know, and yeah. um, it is, like you say, it is a very important thing, aspect mm. of any ghost yeah. hunts, you know, for want of a better yeah. description. Well, when my, um, when, I t- when, when I decided to um, jump ship from romance to paranormal, uh, my mum, as I say, is a great inspiration and um, one of the characters in the Psychic Survey series is based on her, Theo, right, right down to the pink hair. Um, and um, she said to me, she, she said, you know, do it. Absolutely brilliant. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you as much as I know about the spiritual world, etc. Because I say she spent her whole life studying it. Um, she said, but one thing you need to do is to go in and treat it with respect. Be different from horror authors and other horror authors, etc. Out there, go in and treat this whole vast subject with respect. She said, and you won't go wrong. Yeah. No, that's what I did. No, I don't yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever tried the, like the table tipping on these hunts? Because uh, we, oh, yeah. we had an amazing experience with that once. But, yeah. You know, um, have you had, you know, did anything happen with yeah. yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no. We've had the table go crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I've said it on this show a few times. When we did our one, everyone was taking their hand off the table one at a time, so yeah. you could prove that it was not you doing it. Yes. And when yeah, I took my, when I took mine off, I'm sort of going under the table to have a look, and then I put my hand on it, and I, it, I, could, I could put my hand on it. It felt like there was something underneath, like a springy sensation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You put, well, and also that was my side I could feel. You know, so it actually felt like there was something uh, springy on it. You know, it was a really funny, you know. Wow. Yeah, it was really quite yeah. an experience that was. And, and like you say, the table was going mad at that time. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, uh, I believe, you know, we live in the material world, which when you think about it, the material world is pretty damn bizarre, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do believe the spiritual world exists right alongside it. Mm. And, and I do believe the two... The two sort of, you know. Yeah, I do. Agree, I agree with you. They're they're around us all overlap. the time. I mean, the, the fact yeah. of uh, calling them up, uh, if you like, um, they're they're here yeah. all the time anyway. As I yeah, understand. Yeah, the two it. overlap. Yeah, I mean, we we're right beside the spiritual world. You know, the two overlap. And the thing is, you know, because people say, oh, I don't believe in ghosts, don't believe in spirits, don't believe in anything like that. But the fact that you're here in this strange little world, you know, this, mm. in this strange new sort of universe, and do you never think that this life? is strange enough mm, definitely. it's not you know it's it when you really think about what we're doing here and why it's it can blow your mind yeah and so we're here god knows why we're here uh but we are and we live our little lives and what have you but that's just as strange as thinking about the afterlife i think yeah yeah this no, I agree life. With you. Uh, I think you know. I, I feel we're going through some pretty evil times as well, to be honest. Uh, I don't know how well, you feel about that. I don't, they're, they're, I've, yeah. I've heard from several people there's like a, a very large spiritual war going on. There is. 
But there was, and I wrote about this in Rise to Me, there was during World War II, um, led by the likes of Dion Fortune, and, and I think Crowley had a bit to do with it mm. too, and um, who was the chap who wrote James Bond? Ian uh, Fleming. Yes, he was involved, and they all waged a psychic war against Hitler and his cohorts, and they all did it back, you know. Mm. Um, D unfortunately and and all this you know she rallied all the people of psychic ability in the in the u k and they would sit at a certain time of the day and just send out you know light towards the dark, pushing it back, pushing it back, and they would imagine um great big archangels um all around the perimeter of the u k you know guarding this island um and it took it out of her because she died soon after the World uh, World War Two. She died because she uh, she, she was exhausted. Mm. But yeah, there is. This, and I don't know. I, I lots of people say, God, it's a really dark time at the moment. But for me, this has always been a world in peril. You look back through history. This, I think, this is just this world, this dimension, this this level that we're at. We're a world of balance, and there's good and there's evil, and it just keeps, you know. It just keeps trying to vie to one to overbalance the other, you know. Mm. Um, so we've always been a world in peril, yeah. and uh, nothing's changed. This isn't a world of peace. No, not 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 this dimension that we're in. Yeah. Not, not this particular plane. No. That's interesting. You mentioned about dimensions, because that's why I called this show Paranormal Dimensions. Oh ah, yeah. Um, do you feel that I, I do hear that there's like several dim- dimensions and, and several levels? Hey, what are your views yeah. on that? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're in a hard training ground here, mm. I think. But um, we will, we'll, we'll go off to, depending on how you've done and what you've learned in this, on this particular level, we'll go off into higher levels or we might have to repeat this plane again or we might have to go lower still. Yeah. Do you feel um, that some of us may have been in a higher level and come back to a lower level or something, if you like? Yeah, definitely, yeah, to, to try and to try and bring the general, uh, you know, thing up to a certain level. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Yeah, you, you choose to come back. Right, I'll go back and see what I can do with that little shower over there yeah. and, you know, <laughs> blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I don't know how you feel also. I found within this paranormal world, uh, you know, on, on Earth, you seem to yeah. um, bond, you bond with certain people. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel yeah. that you've got some connection there. That's what I've found yes. over the years. You, know. you do, you find your tribe, yeah, with pe- people, like-minded people, um, what have you. But um, I suppose like-minded, like calls to like, you will, will always find people who are interested in the same things as you, and that's what will make you get on, as, as, as it were. But, yeah, I have my, my beliefs. It's all, I stuff it all into the books, and um, the st- strange thing is, is that um, you get people writing in saying, God, you know, that's exactly how I thought of it, mm. and, it's amazing. I've never seen it like you dealt with like this before, it, you know, which I've got my mother to thank for that <laughs> and all she taught me. But um, but then you've got others who are saying, well, I wanted a horror. Mm. Your book was crap. I wanted a horror. <laughs> but I, well, if you want a horror, go and read someone else. Yeah, there's plenty out there, isn't there? Mine. Yeah. There's plenty of gore and all that sort of stuff out there. If that's what floats your boat, put it down, go and read something else, yeah. you know. But they get cross because... It's not horrifying enough. Yeah. And you just think, no, that's not what I do. No. And, you know, it's psychological. Yeah, well, from um, that point of view, I think you can get a better story yeah. out of a psychological story anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the greater yeah. you build up of tension, etc. Yeah. You know. Um, and just what constitutes a haunting, because, you know, what constitutes a haunting for one person may not be what constitutes a haunting for another mm, as well. Mm. So, different experiences. Yeah, it could, end, it could even end up as something not supernatural at all, couldn't it? You know, in Absolutely, some, in some yeah. instances. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you got any sort of psych- uh, psychic powers yourself, do you think? <laughs> psychic powers. Uh, ability. Abilities ability. Um, is, the, yeah. is the way, yeah. Uh, no, 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 I love psychic powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, um, you're so much more. I was going to say superpowers. But, uh, <laughs> superpowers, yeah. <laughs> um, do I, my take on it is that everybody has psychic ability. It's just um, whether we open ourselves to it or not. Mm. So, have I had psychic experiences? Yes. And I have had ever since a child. Um, 
do I open myself to it fully? Not really. I tend to close it off and I tend to just explore it within the realms of fiction. Um, so um, this may be something I'll go back to in later years, but maybe I won't. I don't know yet. Mm. As I say, you do have to be very careful and you do have to call on protection. Yeah, so, yeah. No, I do agree with you. There's a lot of stuff um, out there. I mean, we, we've all got this thing where we can walk into a room and sense, a, sense an atmosphere. or Big sense, yeah. Or yeah. You'll, you'll think of someone and think, oh, I must tell, they must telephone someone, and then all of a sudden they telephone you. You know, it's, it, yeah. it's all that type of thing, isn't it? Um, Why don't you believe in like telepathy and mind reading and stuff like that? Uh, yeah. Oh God, I think the brain is. I mean, God, we we only use a small percentage of the brain, don't we? Mm. So I think the brain is capable of so much. So I believe some people have that ability. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Um, I don't, but um, I, 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 yeah, definitely, some people are able to come out of their bodies, astro travel mm. and all that sort of stuff, can't they? And uh, I used to flirt with that, actually, when I was younger, but I had a nasty experience, so I, I don't flirt with that anymore. Oh, right. Now, I was um, actually going to ask you about that. Have you had any experiences yeah. with that? So, um, so, yeah. so what was the nasty experience you had? Well, um, so I used to practice coming out of, of my body, um, and I was quite good at it. And I've got five brothers. I've got another brother who's very good at it, too. Um, but... I wasn't in a very good space. I just had a baby and I had postnatal depression. And it was all just a bit of a dark time for about a year with this bloody postnatal depression stuff. Mm. And and I was practicing it for some reason. Um the baby was in the in in bed with my husband in the front room and I was in a in a, in a back room, you know, get, trying to get some sleep. And and I don't know why, but I I could feel it happening, so I sort of went with it and I I shot to the corner of the room. And I was like, oh, you know, um, so I could see the room and me in bed and what have you. <laughs> but then something tried to get through the door. And I knew if that, or, and it was rattling the door, and I knew that whatever it was that was going to come through, if I didn't, I didn't want to see it and I shouldn't see it, it wasn't something from th- this realm, as it were, it was from a lower plane. Uh, so I panicked and I got straight back in to my body and I, and I didn't do it after that. Oh, right. I sought advice and I was told not to do it right. again. Well, that was consciously, but probably in your sleep, we probably all do it anyway. Um, yes. Oh, yes. It, yeah, well, that's that, that, That's a different thing. But at that point and, and at that stage in my life, it wasn't a great thing to do. And I'm just glad that that thing never got through the door, right. quite frank. Yeah, I wonder what that was. <laughs> who, God, who knows? Who knows? But, um, yeah. Yeah, just be careful doing it, you know, and, and be in a good place in your in your life when you're doing it. Mm. So, have you, you know. ever been in touch with your spirit guides? Um, no, I, but apparently I've got five. Right, all right. No, yeah, but I don't know who who they are. And well, where they, they are? They're obviously around you now, but uh. yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so where are you? Come on, show yourself. <laughs> um, I don't know who they are. No, but apparently I have got five. Been told that several times. Yeah, I do. That they, I've heard that they do sometimes um, swap. Yeah, won't they think, oh, well, I've done my bit with her now, you take over, or, or whoever yeah. it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've done my bit with her, for God's sake, <laughs> you take over, oh, I've had enough. But I yeah. do understand that there's someone, there's always one that stays with you for your, your whole life, but um, yeah. whether that's true yeah. or not, I don't know either. You know, it's only yeah, what I've been to told. Know. Yeah, I'd love to know yeah. too. How do you look on reincarnation? Do you, do you believe there's a, a lot involved in that? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, in fact... I just had my Akashic records read by a lovely lady, um, local lady, um, <coughs> who was recommended to me. So I thought I'd give that a go. <coughs> and yeah, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've lived several lives. I knew I'd lived in France, and she picked up on that. I was, I was a wandering minstrel, no less, in the 15th century, oh, called Eliza. Um, but um, all that aside, yeah, definitely believe in, in reincarnation. I think you've come here many, many times. And if if not this particular round, one like it, and what have you, until you can go up higher rounds, yeah. Yeah, I mean, also, I think what comes into it, I, mean, I don't know if you believe in UFOs, etc. Um, or aliens. I've seen them. I've seen them too. Okay, well, we can talk about yeah. that, because um, <coughs> I've seen them too. But, um, yeah. So we could actually go to a different planet as well, couldn't we, the way I see um Well... Well, my mum was really into all the UFO stuff. Me, not so much. Although I don't disbelieve it, I, not at all. 
And um, <clears throat> when I was younger, I was about eight, and me and Mum were walking along the um, seafront, Brighton seafront, after having been to the Wimpy for dinner. <laughs> and um, and literally, it was the strangest, bizarrest thing. <clears throat> and I wasn't the only one to see um, to see them. There, it, it was reported in the newspaper, etc. Uh, there was all of us along the seafront. It was it was I'd say it was night. Uh, but early evening, about eight, nine or whatever, and out of nowhere and very low flying was literally a V formation of flying discs, right, yeah. burning bright white, and they shot at huge speed across the seafront and then just disappeared. <clears throat> so they came out of nowhere, they went into nowhere, and they were so low, and I've never, well, it was an unidentified flying object, several of them, I mean, it's in the true sense of the word, and um, we were like, and everyone on the beach was like, what the hell? What was that? And, yeah, it was reported on. And um, so what was it? I don't know. No, were, were they silent as well? <coughs> yeah, completely silent, yeah. They didn't hear a yeah. sound or anything. So they couldn't have been a, no, no. Um, like a, a, a jet or something <laughs> like that. No, they weren't in the shape of a jet. They were round. No, but I was saying it's um, like, um, like they'll say oh, it's just an aeroplane <coughs> or something. So normally if it was a, 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 no. a helicopter or a plane or something, you'd have um, yeah. heard of it. Yeah, they were completely silent. And they were, I can see them now as clear as daylight in my mind's eye. Um, burning white, white orbs. Hmm. Burning white orbs. Brightest white you've, you'll ever see. Hmm against the night sky but uh so it's in a v formation so one two three four probably about six five or six of them yeah <coughs> that's interesting because you say the figure six uh we were yeah. we were sitting a couple of years ago we were sitting outside um where we used to live on we had like a um a decking type of thing and yeah. my wife suddenly saw this is the middle of the day by the way she saw um white objects way up in the sky yeah. And there was like six of them, yeah. funny enough. Yeah. It was like two V, yeah. two v formations in six. Yeah. And there were six of them all together going across <coughs> the sky. Wow. I, mean, I couldn't see them at first, but she said, what are they? And I'm looking, I'm trying yeah. to find them. And suddenly I saw them. I thought, wow. And I was following them for quite a while. So what yeah. the hell they were, I don't know. I, mean, I do I do believe that, you know, I mean, we're, we're very arrogant to think we're the only oh, life form, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, yeah. so... I do believe that there are this other stuff out there, and and that probably the the powers that be know all about it. Yeah, yeah, I I, I believe that too. I mean, I, you I, know, in 1967 actually, I saw a big oval orange object going across the yeah. sky, which was completely quiet. Um, yeah. And I've said this on the show, because so anyone listening has heard it before. <coughs> but also, yeah. um, when I was younger, sitting on my steps, I was actually watching a star move and stop yeah. and move and stop and. At the time, yeah. I just thought it was a star. But, yeah. Um, it was only yeah. late, in later years I thought, well, what the hell was that? Because stars, was stars yeah. don't do that. You know. No. Yes. No, exactly. It is. Uh, yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's fascinating. The, this whole where we are, this dimension, the whole thing is happen. It's fascinating. There's a lot to be fascinated by. Mm. And also, that's why it's called the paranormal. I mean, most people don't <coughs> regard the paranormal as uh, a real thing, do they? Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm so the paranormal. What it means is outside of normal, doesn't mm. it? I suppose technically what it means, and uh, there's a lot that's outside of normal. Yeah, I suppose a hell of a lot. Uh, well, I guess we're talking supernatural. I mean, a lot of people will yeah. dismiss the, the supernatural, saying, "Oh, it's just a load of rubbish and it uh, doesn't exist." Yeah. But I believe that people yeah. like you and myself and uh, many other people I've spoken yeah. to, there is a lot in, yeah. in it, you know, and uh, yeah. things do happen. But there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and st- stuff does happen, and it's in, in it, and it's, you know, it depends how you know you can close yourself off completely from it, but um, you miss out on a lot that's exciting in life because it is part of the rich fabric of this realm. It is, yeah, I agree with you. So you're you're actually writing, you've got another book on the go now. Um, yeah. Have you got other things planned in the future as well? Uh, other books yeah. that you're actually thinking about and working on? Yeah. Oh God, always, 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 always. So I'm, right, I'm working on uh, a book, which is the fourth book in the This Haunted World series, which um, sort of deals with places, real life places, um, and weaves a lot of fact with fiction, as, mm. as I normally do. 
Um, the first one is set in Venice and the island of Pavelia in the Venetian Lagoon. The second one is set in a hotel that I stayed in in Pennsylvania. And the third, third one is set in Highgate. This one is set in a castle in Scotland that I stayed in during the summer holidays oh, wow. for yeah. a week and is just, oh my God, the weight of history as you, as you, you know, you could feel it in the air all around you. So um, it's reputedly haunted, but as I've told them, it certainly will be by the time I finish with you. <laughs> and uh, so that's the fourth one. Um, I've got a, um, I'm adding to the Reach for the Dead series as well. Um, so book three needs to be written in that. And I'll be adding to Psychic Survey series, which book nine needs to be written in that series. And there's a few sort of other things. I, I would quite like to um, write about the uh, the Magdalene laundries. Um, I there's other subjects that I've uh, touched on that I would like to write about and expand, etc. So that's what I will be doing. In the paranormal vein, you mean? In the paranormal vein, you, yeah. You don't think you'll get, sort of branch off into anything else? Will I write? We, um, funny enough, um, this summer I wrote, um, I published uh, Summer of Grace, and Summer of Grace is more psychological mystery right. and more more of a mystery thriller shall we mm. say set in kansas uh in uh in, in the usa and i really loved writing that it was quite a nice little refreshing break for me to have um overall a, a, a break from the paranormal so i might write more mystery type thrillers but they usually have quite a dark aspect to them so um yeah. yeah, I might I might do more of that in the future. Yeah, definitely. it probably doesn't do any any harm to have a little detour away from uh, no, the parallel. No, no. So exactly, it it doesn't it doesn't do any harm to have a little detour every now and then. But the paranormal is where I will mainly keep my focus. Yeah. Well, from what I've seen, um, I think that that's probably your best focus anyway. You know? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. As I say, uh, the, the covers are, are fantastic, and I will put um, like links to all your books on the Paranormal Dimensions page. Um, oh, yeah, yeah and, and also I'm going to link that Twilight Ghost Hunts as well, because uh, it's a fantastic yeah. page they've got. Um, they've got a really yeah. great, nice website that's uh, very informative, tells you a lot about... Yeah. Um, the, and I might even see you on a ghost hunt. You never know, because I'm going to actually yeah. sign up for some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. They've got one at the Grimsdyke Hotel, actually. Um, I'm not sure when it is. I need to. Uh, oh, I saw that one. Yeah, a really, they've got really, yeah. really nice bedrooms you can hire for the night. Yeah, aren't they? yeah. But the Grimsdyke is a place that I've heard of before. I thought, oh, I do love a hotel store. I do love a haunted hotel. Yeah. I really do. You can have um, you can have great fun with a haunted hotel. The various residents That's of right. yeah. There's a TV yeah. there's a TV thing we saw last night. It was on Amazon Prime or something called yeah. Haunted Hotels, I think. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's in America, obviously, but it's uh, <coughs> all, all the different people that have gone through there. You know, it's, yeah. it's actually quite scary. Some of the stories that were coming out. Oh. You know. Well, I've stayed at a couple of hotels where I thought I'm getting the heck out of here, and, and I've left one at like 11, 12 at night, thinking I'm not staying here. Really? No way. Yeah, one up in the north and one over in Paris. So what happened? And, Come on, tell us what happened. <laughs> well, in the first one, which is the one up at the north, the at, the atmosphere was just horrendous. I went in, and it, and it you, you're literally on edge. You you could not settle hmm. in your bed there. And I was I used to. Um, yeah, I was working away at the time, and and I just thought I'm not, I can't stay here. It was in this little bed sit, not bed sit, uh, B and B, I suppose, stroke hotel. In my mind, it's more a B and B, but I think it was actually a hotel. This was we're going back 20, 25 years. Mm. It was terrifying, and I don't know what happened there. I didn't want to know. I just packed my bags and I left. Uh, in the, the the one that I stayed in in Paris, again, I was away for work, and um, and it was a pyramid shaped hotel. It's called the Pyramid. And I stayed in this room, and I'm not kidding you, it was like there was a storm raging around me all night. Hmm. But there was no storm. There really was no storm. But the storm was inside the room, and I was in the centre of it. And it, and I sat up all night, clutching my pillow to me, thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, as soon as light comes. I was too scared to move. Wow. Uh, but that's the sensation I got, like a storm, a whirling vortex, and I was in the centre of it. Um, as soon as dawn broke, it did, the light came, 
it did calm down. So I got up, packed myself, went downstairs uh, to someone on reception. I said, I have just had no sleep. What the hell is in that room? And she went, oh, hang on. Oh, sorry, we didn't mean to put you in that room. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Well, yeah. And I was like, well, what's in there? She said, well, we don't know, but nobody likes it. Sorry, wow. we shouldn't have put you in that room. And I'm like, well, grab me a taxi and I'm going to the airport and I'm going home. Uh, I was so, it was horrible. That was terrifying. It, whatever energy mm. was in that room swirling around me was malevolent, put it that way. Yeah, so that was really a, uh, a psychic experience, you could say. Yeah, Because you yeah. picked up on and something on my that own. was in there. Yeah, on your own. Yeah. I had to enjoy it on my own. I'm like, you know, this is not fun. This is really <laughs> not fun. This is just horrendous. I had to sort of put the light around me and, and it just went all around me and... As the light, came, the natural light came in, mm. it did recede wow. as it would. Mm. So I think that's the sort of experience that everyone wants, but then when it happens, it's, uh, they don't like it. You don't it. want you, it when you don't it, like it. Don't want it when you're on your own. Yeah. You, know, you know, you really don't. It, it was scary. It was really scary. You could have done um, it. Yvette Fielding then. <laughs> yeah, well, she would have run screaming in the other direction. I stayed. I stayed. But I was too scared to move. That's why I stayed. But in the, the hotel up north, or B&B, whatever it was, um, I did pack my bags and leave. Uh, so it wasn't, whatever was in that room wasn't as bad as what was in the pyramid. Wow. I suppose the important and question is, did they charge you? Um, well, it was charged to account oh, anyway. So, yeah, it, was, so. it was a work thing, so it was charged to account. So, um, and I, I spoke to my mum. I was speaking to my mum about it afterwards, and she was wondering whether the shape of the pyramid, of you know, I mean, the whole thing about a pyramid is that it was built to sort of channel mm. energy, mm. wasn't it? And she was wondering if some sort of energy it had attracted the whole sh- that, that that shape of it, you know, sort of had attracted some sort of energy down into the pinpoint and. My room was just the centre of yeah, it. Yeah, it's quite a possibility, isn't it? I mean, the, yeah, yeah. So you don't know, I don't, you know, and I don't know, and 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 it is what it is. But yeah, it was scary. Yeah, it's a fascinating uh, thought of it. It's a shame yeah. to think about maybe trying to record something. Have you ever done anything like EVP recordings or anything like that? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. And and uh, well, how old was I? So, 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 sort of, I didn't have a mobile phone then. Right. Um. So I didn't have the means of doing that. And there wasn't anything you could see either. Mm. So, I, well, actually, maybe the, uh, you know, maybe it would have picked up something. You don't know. But, um, it, it was, it was a sensation and it was, it was a very real sensation. Yeah. I think when things happen like that, you're not really prepared to sort of just grab your phone anyway. Oh, you're, no, you're, you're probably no. more just thinking about what's happening at the time. Uh, you are caught in the moment of it, and it is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, personally, I like an experience like that. I mean, if somebody told me there's a haunted house, should I come <coughs> and sleep tonight? I'd be, I said, yeah, I'll be up there straight away. <laughs> uh, well, I, well, I have slept in haunted place. I mean, I've been to, uh, I've written about Old Cross Cottage. That's before in the Psychic Survey series, and that's a real place mm. down in oh, right. uh, Dorset. And um, and how I described it all is completely accurate you know has coffin mid stairs wow <laughs> um for example <clears throat> off cuts of course yeah but uh, i've never heard of that were, before <laughs> yeah they were coffin lids but they were off cuts and um and uh there's been some strange activity in there there um it used to be an old pub so it's three houses now one one cottage mm. but the front was it used to be the village pub and this we're talking sort of like 1600s or whatever mm. You can still hear the pub noises, and I did hear them. Wow! In the de- in the dead of night, I did hear them, and you know the muted voices, the clinking of glasses, etc. Um, there's um, you, you hear other people I've stayed with in the cottage. Um, they uh, rep- they repeat uh, report at night um, somebody getting into bed with them. Oh putting out the covers and getting into bed and putting their arm around them or just poking them in the back. Oh, God. <laughs> um, voices, you often hear voices mm. when there are no voices, you know, no voices, um, nobody said anything, whatever, you can often hear a voice, mm. you know, sort of reverberate in the atmosphere, footsteps as well. Um, it's, it's the strangest of places. Um, and that's 
very, very paranormal, I think. And it's got it's, it's got a um, a graveyard attached, uh, not attached. It's a it's a short walk, but a graveyard in the village, and some stuffs happen there too. Mm. Strange stuff. Of course, I mean pub. There's a lot of old pubs. They've got a lot of history, like a lot of old mm. ho- hotels with people yeah. that have been through it's, them and everything. Yeah. So. Well, I mean the the walls. You know, these walls. Everything's energy, isn't mm. it? Yeah. As, as, as Einstein said, everything is energy. Yeah, nothing and nothing walls, is solid. Yeah, you're right. No, walls soak up energy. They soak up yeah. thoughts and feelings and emotions. And, and I think sometimes they, re, they reverberate, you know, into the atmosphere. I don't think it's always an intelligent haunting. I think sometimes it's just like um, something like, you know, it's been recorded just playing over yeah. and over again. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like the Richard Felix uh, theory, isn't it? Uh, well, I don't suppose he's the only one that said it, but uh, he's, he talks about mm. uh, a lot of recordings in castle walls and things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's, but there's nothing actually, you know, it's just a replay. Mm. There's nothing actually um, intelligent about the haunting. You know, it's not a, a, a grounded soul, as it were, mm. stuck here, unable to go to the light, mm. you know. So. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. <laughs> but it is. Anyway, after talking to you, I'm going to have to get all your books now. Because <laughs> I find them quite fascinating. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that either, I mean it. Uh, oh. So hopefully if I ever run into you, you have to come and do a big signing session for me. <laughs> I will, of course I will. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I would say I'm, I may well meet you on one of these ghost hunts because I do intend to yeah. go on some of these Twilight ghost hunts. In fact, if I'm going on one, I'll, I'll let you know. And uh, Yeah, let me know which ones you're going on, yeah. It's, uh, yeah I do intend to do that because my wife likes them as well. So it's uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my husband likes them. So does my son, funny enough. He loves it. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. But um, anyway, Shane, it's been fantastic talking to you. Thanks so much for finding the time to come on. And um, as I say, oh, I'll well, put link, I will put links on the uh, Paranormal Dimensions page. And um, yeah, it's been great. And uh, I do hope to run into you at some point. And uh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> we'll have to do that. Yeah, definitely. Let, keep 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 me posted on which ones you're going on. Yeah, stay in <laughs> stay in touch. And um, as I say, I'll let you let you go now. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. Bye-bye, Shaney. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. There we are. That was Shaney Struthers. Very much enjoyed that. I hope you did too. You've been listening to Paranormal Dimensions on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm David Young. Thank you for listening. Join me again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Paranormal Dimensions is as bright and powerful as our celestial star, the sun. And although it's expending thousands of pounds of energy every minute of the day, have no fear. There's plenty left. Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network.
is they're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Fine. I remember my daughter Kerry saying to me, you know, Dad, one day I'm going to be able to walk down Union Street. And I'm going to be able to say, my dad's not mad. Look at what he said. Look at what is happening. He was right. No so problem. Patient. No, 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 no. Thank you very much. Have a picture of it. Of course, yeah. We just want that one. Yeah. Who's it for? Yeah, that's Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, my hero. Oh, you're mine. Hey. hey. Brilliant work you're doing. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, it's all yours. <laughs> we love you. Can we get a selfie? You're so amazing. Go on then. <laughs> oh, well done. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, mate. I've been following you for years. Keep up Cheers, the good mate. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, mate. But how good does that feel to say that they're not laughing at you now? No, they're not laughing at me now. No, they're not. They're, they're trying they're to ignore out. me. The sight of these people um, in these vast numbers um, walking through the London streets saying we're not having it anymore is... It's so freaking emotional, you know. You know, I've done some things in my life, but, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is an incredible day for me. To, uh, to have seen uh, all those years ago, those decades ago, where no one wanted to know and uh, everything you said was crazy. And now you, you see the world waking up on this scale. So, you know, the, the whole COVID um, era has, uh, has been a, a, a fascistic nightmare, but it has woken people up to the fact that um, there are forces running human society that are not the people they see and we have an opportunity now to 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 turn that seeing that into ceasing to cooperate with it and, and if the kind of numbers we're starting to see cease to cooperate with the dictats of authority and fascism then the numbers alone mean it cannot prevail so this is a, a fantastic pivotal day and um, yeah and uh, a, a day that gives you enormous encouragement for where we go from here. Hey! Hey! How are you, man? Hi! Am I going to pick you? Yeah, of course. I love this. Thank you. How the police should be. Stage one, you create a problem. It could be uh, a manufactured virus. You want a reaction and you want them to either say, do something, or you want them to accept what the authorities suggest must be done. So one of the agendas is to massively cull the population. They want to reduce the numbers.